Hi, and welcome to the part two of my thank you letter to Destiny 2, and just Bungie overall, Sony even, just everyone involved in this gorgeous masterpiece of an expansion. This is how you cap off a saga and introduce a new one, because holy shit, this video will be glossing over a whole lot of things, not fully diving deep into anything, but I will be pointing out things here and there, like things I forgot in video, or in the previous video, and stuff like this. That cube over there is water. I just wanted to point that out because it's just fucking gorgeous. The reason why both of these videos are being posted, even though neither of them are an hour long, which is my typical length, it's not a typical length for YouTube, but my typical length, is because this video I really wanted to just show off. I wanted to show off all the places you can go, just not all the places, but a good gloss over it all and it's just fucking gorgeous i wanted you to see and hear everything how it flows how it just i wanted you to experience in real time instead of having it sped up and just a lot more clunky overall i was gonna go show you the other side of that but that's some place you can explore I'm wanting to show off the overall look of this, which is why I'm looking around here and there. I am going to show off specific places that I think are absolutely fucking gorgeous and say a little bit more, but overall I'm just trying to gloss over it so you can explore for yourself, because this expansion is fucking crazy. Which is what I did with the subclass in the previous video, and just overall gameplay elements, trying to gloss over it as much as I can, but giving you as much information as I think is necessary. Uh, same with why I do not have the icon that I typically do in videos like this. When I am recording in the editing, not just live, relatively speaking. Uh, the reason is I want you to see every piece, every pixel on your screen of how gorgeous this shit is. It is just... Damn! But hell is still fucking gorgeous, and you will see. As a titan, you have the ability to punch the ground to negate fall damage. Uh, with any uh, melee ability that gives you movement. So the strand melee, shoulder charging, ballistic slam, that general thing. I don't know if I see this later in the video, but... This expansion has an entirely new concept on destinations. This is not a public destination. At least from what I've seen, there's no random people here. This is only me and the fire team I bring in, which is why there's matchmaking for this, if you want to go to that. And it's fucking crazy. Same with the mode. And that right there is why you should really use the skimmer to negate fall damage when dodging, not really anything else, because that's all it's really good for, uh, or negating collision damage, like when you drive straight into that, you can dodge, like when you're scratching your nose or something, and just keep driving forward, kind of thing. Uh, let's keep going. If you've ever played the Warmind DLC, Overthrow is basically escalation, escalation Protocol. Escalation Protocol is amazing. It's constantly doing things, constantly killing things to constantly escalate the threat and make it harder and harder and harder. The thing about this one, though, if I, if I understood it correctly, you can actually go to each of the three areas, level them up individually, and then knock them all out at the same time. I'm quickly checking if there's a portal to make this a little bit faster. I'm assuming there is not. Okay. Wait up. That is that is not even the direction. I thought that was a direction. I keep assuming that is the direction. And I'm going to actually get this at real speed so you can actually hear me. Because this area is gorgeous, but kind of a maze. Because I was planning on putting the two videos together, relatively speaking, I was planning on speeding this up a whole lot. And something amazing. Kind of not amazing here, like I would love to be able to use my skimmer here, but this destination, and this is what I was wanting to say, is an amazing skate park. Like, it, even using the Sparrow, I have not used the Sparrow yet, I personally just prefer the skimmer overall, but the skimmer here is just, it, like, it's like the skimmer was made for this destination, and it is fucking gorgeous.
Something very interesting about this destination overall. A couple things. First, these you will find just around the... I should be able to consume you. Why can't I consume you? Do I not have one active? No, that went away. Okay, cool. And that also gives me a reason to cover that, because I wanted to cover that previously. But I just forgot, because I covered the passives. There is actives you can find, like the passives. And all these are reasons to just play the destination and grind different things on it. These can allow you to do some crazy shit overall. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. No, well, I'm not going to do that. And now, and the reason why you want to keep grinding for them is because, like you just saw, they have an expiration date. Which is an hours, which is kind of annoying, to be completely honest. But, overall, it should, it, it's, mac the, okay, the reason why, and just look at that region. That's all I really have to say, actually. It, they are kind of fucking busted. And then if you build into it, it doubles up and just, holy shit. But all those different abilities or all those different build crafty elements are actually pretty fucking cool. And now, I'm guessing, uh, and now, go to the timestamp here. Okay, sometimes the geometry of the sparrow does not match up what you're seeing. Because right there, the sparrow should have been, or not the sparrow, the skimmer, should have been able to go around the edge and then fly back around. Like, that's what I was trying to do with that backwards dash, to grab the ledge, keep driving. It just said no. Also, the reason why you saw two triangles there with a fuck ton of hands is because that is story stuff. Uh, the story stuff there is campaign things with that part there that is actually how you previously got to this part of the map overall the first section was just a section for story that one was to actually get across unless you're using that portal uh something kind of cool something that i am going to want to do if i ever get a fire team together but i highly suggest you do this uh this destination is basically designed for speed running not speed running killing everything not destroying a whole lot of shit but getting from one side of the map to the other how fast can your fire team do that? Like, not, not, don't even like post it anywhere. Just see amongst yourselves who is truly the fastest. Like, settle it in smash, settle it in race. But like the rules, like if you do want to do it, the rules I would put is you cannot fast travel, and that's it. You cannot fast travel. You never mind. You cannot fast travel. But the not rule, but where you have to start to make it pretty fair, is all the way back at where I started this entire sprint. All the way back there is what I hide this is just doing. And then running a path similar to mine, not necessarily the exact same. But things like that allow you to just have crazy movement. But, like you saw the tangle there, if I was using, say, Strand, I would have been able to grab it or grab the tangle, toss it, grapple to it, which would give me even more distance. Like, thinking about this in a speedrunning perspective, it's just, I think this is kind of what this destination was made for. Like, with the skating, I think it was made to move on, and it is fucking gorgeous. Because things like that. And, okay, this destination, because of how this area works, I always forget this, but I, I'm going to keep trying to remember it. That cave there connects this section to that section. Uh, but you can, which is what I'm going to do, go all the way up here 
and see the amazing, gorgeous tunnels, which is what I'm trying to show off. That's just a good speed running bit to get to the other section. This is going to show off the entire pathway, the gorgeous pathway. And I think that would also count for the speed running unless you, with your fire team, want to turn that or cut that, uh, basically make that an out of bounds, gentleman rule kind of thing. Which would be kind of cool if you guys could do that. Some, uh, some firm groups won't actually be able to do that, depending. This destination is so fucking gorgeous. That is like the pyramid out in the distance on Europa. And it is just... I love it when Bungie does that. And things like this. I can't see the landmark now. I know it's that direction. I saw how small it was. Even there it is. Speaking of the glow. And see how small it was even though it was massive just a little bit ago? Th this destination is gorgeous. And with that said, whoever made this destination, or more, better way to put it, the team that made this destination, thank you for making my new favorite destination. My favorite destination for the longest time has been the Dreaming City. Basically just because of the uh, Taken Realm, because the Taken, or the uh, Woken Realm, or Trent... A Cinder Plane? There we go. Cinder Plane specifically, because that's specifically what it's called. The Taken Realm is just that. Uh... The Ascendant Plane is my personal favorite place to go in that, but it's not just one entire area I can go to in that. I have to do something specific. This destination overall is just fucking gorgeous. The only downside is some places you can't spawn your Sparrow or Skimmer. And the reason why I say Sparrow first, then Skimmer, is because for the longest time, there was only ever Skimmers. Even in D1, there's only Skimmers. Something gorgeous about this part here is that it shows how less real this becomes o uh, overall. Like, it becomes less and less real. And that that is just amazing how visual storytelling is done in this game. Just overall. Like, up ahead, you'll see a place, a section, that is more real. Like this. This is just basically ripped from the Cosmodrome. Like, even the color, even the dirt, this is basically directly from the Cosmodrome, even though this isn't. And those are prismatic uh, fragments and stuff you can get overall. I don't have the, uh, the things, because that, uh, that is a little bit of a grind. It's not a bad thing, just I have not done that yet. Uh, I've been doing basically everything else. This destination overall is taking chunks from places here and there, which is fucking gorgeous. And the reason why I'm doing this sprint overall. This here is in the very, like... Each section here is in different places of the Cosmodrome. If you sprint around the Cosmodrome, you'll see these sections. Like, this is in the New Light campaign. I don't think the ship is still there if you go there. But that general hangar is still there. This is part of a strike that it doesn't have that hangar. And just little things like that. Not even little. Pretty big things like that. Just make this destination fucking gorgeous. And the reason why that is more real than this area could easily be because the darkness is doing a lot of tomfoolery here. Again, with visual storytelling, how this game is told through story and just visual and just all sorts of extra things here and there. If you play through the basic campaign, you'll see that this area is where you first spawn in ish. Not not exactly. Like this highway here isn't on up and different things like that. But the thing I want to point out is beyond our birth, because we like birthed around here or made birth like whatever you want to call it around in this general vicinity and that was our story all the way up to here basically like anyone's story it was rewinding basically now before that was him and something amazing in the final mission for the final shape when you are at the final mission you are about to fight the witness when he is just getting pissed off and saying his shit you can actually see his face in the the shapes that are flying in the wind. But 
only when it lines up with that entire monolith, which is fucking gorgeous. And another bit of visual storytelling, because that monolith isn't just a monolith. It is also them. And the reason why it's also them, uh, those things there, what the fuck? I have that been up there. Uh, that there and that there are all exploration things. Same with the bit up there that I'm going to try and remember. That's fucking painful. Because knowing the witness, that's an actual person right there. So that that's just even more. Like, imagine being frozen in time and space with a thing stabbed through you, perpetually feeling that agony. But you can't do shit about it. And... You're not even really conscious. You're there, but you're not really there. Like that that is the hell people go through when the witness does the witness's bullshit. And the reason why I know is that that's kind of how it works is because of Bungie's story and how it overall tells so many little things here and there. It's just it's just fucking gorgeous. And with this trip, if you do want to do the race, I highly suggest doing little things here and there. Like, not highly suggest. I, if you want to do gentleman's rules, you could do things like... And the reason why I say gentleman's rules, even though fem females could technically be playing this, is because I mean gentlemen as in, like, human. I don't mean you have a dick. Like, that, that, Why does that really matter when it comes to gentleman? Why does it have to be gentlewoman? Why does it have to be actress? Why not just actor? When it, it sure, like, the... Like, the guys had it to begin with, but that doesn't really matter. You have it, too, as the female. Like, that doesn't matter overall. Uh, but I highly suggest having an entire, like, or mo if you want to do it multiple times, I highly suggest having gentlemen's rules here and there. Like, for an example, a rule where you can't, like, have Amplify. A rule where you can't use Eager Edge. A rule where you can't use Strand. Or something around those lines, where it's... A overall mad dash, seeing who's the fastest, and little places here. Like, you can say no portal, where you have to run through the destination, through that little tunnel here and there, or through the tunnel, which would actually be a hell of a lot longer of a trip, and would actually be a lot tighter. We have to crouch here and there, like, a lot cooler. And this is where I think you should end it, like, touching this here should be the end, if you do want to be very specific. But with all that said, and shown, I highly suggest watching Bungie's, uh, or Destiny 2's, not Bungie's, because Bungie's trying to do a big division between, not division, how we put it, they're wanting to say Destiny 2 is basically its own thing. That is their child, but it is their own child that is not Bungie. Now, there is now going to be a uh, marathon, another game down the line, which is why they have the Twid, which is this week at Destiny, instead of the Twab, which is this week at Bungie, and that's why they changed that. They're trying to have that, this is Destiny, this is uh, Marathon, this is the next game, like, they're trying to make that division because they're able to branch out now because of Sony. Speaking of that, there's another thing I want to talk about. The thing that is going on with uh, Helldivers 2 makes me not want to play it even more. I have seen the game, and I said to begin with, it doesn't look like my cup of tea, but it actually kind of is, looking at it more and more and more. It is my cup of tea. But how the gamers treated Sony's A, making an account, is fucking atrocious. I hate that so much. They will play Xbox games, Nintendo games, any game other than Sony, because Sony didn't do it before. Any other game. And the fuck of the absolute fucked up thing about that is Sony is going to have a store on on PC, like how Xbox has, like how you can play Xbox games on PC. PlayStation is going to do that later. They have said this. What they are basically doing with Helldivers 2, they never said this because PlayStation doesn't say this, like they didn't say triangle, like the triangle button for PS3 had a pressure sensitive. Uh, setting or the thing for which is why it was always mushy. They never said this at least from I could tell they never said this 
but that was to help everyone out long term and everyone's reaction to these people can't play it and their reaction to okay let's take it away like they're the overall community and everyone involved is just being dicks to one another and for an example playstation and sony itself even hell divers too have the right to take it from different comp take it from different uh, countries here and there for what they want to just because it is from that, just because it is able to be played there, does not mean it is supposed to always be able to be played there. There's been countless games over the years that have been banned because of something or another that came out later, or something else, something here and there that made the game banned overall. Like, I think D&D &D is banned in some parts of the globe. Reasons unknown to me, but I believe it's banned in some places around the globe. Which is fucking crazy. And different things here and there. Which is why I don't really mind it, and why I think the community that plays it is very sim- Sony has my curse. Sony tries their best to innovate, help everyone, but people will say rather Xbox has more games. PlayStation 3 has no games, even though one of the best games that has ever been made is Infamous 1 and 2. I can't really decide which one. Hell, Infamous 2 is with Infamous Festival Blood with all of this shit. All of those games are fucking gorgeous, and they also have Fracture, uh, Haze, so many others that I'm just going to list off those, but so many other games that make Sony so fucking good across the generations. But the reason why I said they have my curse is because my curse is people don't like me. Like, I can do the best thing for them. They're going to spit in my face, call me every name in the book, and then do exactly what I gave them. Like, eat the food, or do the advice, or something like that. That's how everyone treats me, even my family, which is why I don't like getting into that. Like, that, that is a curse that is always happening with other people, even on the internet, which is fucking stupid. Like, for an example, when I talk, when I, uh, not talk, when I text or comment to Zavala in her, uh, uh, posting saying she's streaming now, those videos or those posts, or those comments specifically, are not meant to be anything more than just hey, good luck, you got this shit, like, I do when I play with anyone, like, if I could talk to her, text her, I would say the same shit, not to do anything, like, dating or anything like that, like, a lot of people want to say, which is why I'm trying to say this, I'm not a simp, calling somebody a simp is automatically a, an offensive word, like, where I'm from, you talk shit, you get hit, which is why I instantly get very pissed when somebody talks shit over the internet, because there's nothing I can do, there's nothing I can hit, like, I can't stop you from talking shit besides threatening you with banning, and that's not really could. You shouldn't get banned for freedom of speech, which is why I don't like doing that. Uh, like blocking them, I would personally prefer to be able to do that, but I don't think you can do that on YouTube. Um, but that general bullshit is what also happens with PlayStation. And I just realized that that is weird and it sucks how innovative, good people, and I say good people because PlayStation. PlayStation overall values your time and money with the games they have made. Like, for an example, Infamous. Infamous Onumara Uno was an amazing game and had so much shit in it. It was a beautiful masterpiece overall that could do so much crazy things. But no one talks about it. No one, no one makes a video on it. No one, there's nothing on it at all, and people don't even acknowledge it's a thing because they would rather say PlayStation 3 has no games. That's it. That's what they would rather say. And it is annoying how that's a thing when it comes to good people and good companies and just good things in general. Sorry for getting this down on like a more depressing topic and trying to land the mood a little bit. That is why I refuse to give in. To give in to just being a dick. Because sure, being a dick is... Being a dick isn't even easy. If you've played Infamous, you'll understand being a dick isn't easy. Sure, you have money, power, riches. And in Infamous, it's not money, power, riches. But it's power in Infamous. Sure, you have that. But you have nothing else. You have no... You have nobody liking you. You have no one caring about you. No one loving you. You have no one around you at all that at all cares about you in any way, shape, or form except for your power because that's all you are. And... That is why I refuse to just be mean. Like, I could be a dick, could take, could do all these different things, but I refuse. I want to be like the Traveler. I would rather be smacked down, be taken shards out of, but still be good. Like that. And 
this is why I want to say all of that about PlayStation, about how PlayStation is amazing and how Bungie is amazing. They will get shot. They will get chunks taken out of them left and right, just spit on all sorts of shit. And yet, they will release an expansion like this that is the same price, if I remember correctly, as Forsaken. As Forsaken. And this expansion, one, has a bigger destination off rip than now let me offer it as in like the uh, tangled shore the dreaming city i believe is bigger bigger if you combine the two it is most definitely bigger but the overall sandbox and how little things here and there and i will even consider the the looks like everything the art the amount of time and effort it took to like the reason why i want to show off the destination because i don't know if you understand as the viewer how intense game design is the reason why you just see this uh, freeze frame is because I go on a tangent after all this, but I do want to say this. The reason why game design is so intense and why Bungie's game design specifically really makes me want to be a game developer is because of how the intricacies that I would want to do are shown in this. Like, the hands, the fingers, every little thing about every little piece of that world was placed on purpose. They have to, like, the segmentation of different things was on purpose. They placed all of those pieces on purpose, and it is fucking gorgeous! And this is another thing of why I know Bungie is fucking amazing, and why I would love to work with Sony, possibly Bungie, but anyone under that umbrella of Sony I want to work with to make games and just and work with specifically I want to make I want to be my own publisher my own designer but work with them to make ideas come to just absolute just bloom just the shit that could be done and because of how I think how I do things like how I talked about the subclasses I have not seen another person make a video on these two are opposites these two are opposites and that's the in between because that's how it works and even even how it's flipped, how that's on that how that's on this side with the light and dark, and this is light and dark, that's also pretty fucking gorgeous overall. It's just the subclass is amazing and I love it. Or not just the subclass, just the, the gameplay and just this entire expansion is amazing overall. And every game that Bungie has made is amazing. Sure, people don't like Halo 1. It is Sony. Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3 all were loved by everyone. Even Destiny 1 and 2, or not even Destiny 1 and 2. Destiny 1 had a lot of shit talkers. Destiny 2 had more shit talkers and people that just really wanted to hate on it, even though it was really, really a good game overall. But Sony, when they took it, holy fuck, it went to a new strata. And now it's kind of dying down, which is good. But no one can really talk shit about this, which is why... I am saying overall, could shit Bungie and Sony overall. And I say Sony overall because without Sony's money, Bungie wouldn't be able to do this. Without a doubt. Sony's desire to make good games. And their desire, their eye, to be able to see the potential with this. And then say, you know what? Hey, hey little flower guy. You want some water? Have an entire bucket. But not just water. Like, power aid that will not make them overdose for a, for a, plow, for a power. Uh, power flower, actually, that works. I was not trying to say that, but power flower, that works. Pouring the precise ingredients, magical voodoo, hoodoo, just pouring that on to make this power flower grow into just an massive thing that is better than anything else around because prismatic is the future of destiny in so many different ways like even in the story even in the story they say even in if i highly suggest like i don't think i've said this fully i highly suggest watching the destiny 2 the newest destiny 2 video on destiny 2's youtube channel Covering the episodes and the future of Destiny, how they're going to have year the next year also and years beyond that, on uh, how each episode this year is kind of dabbling on, there is another thing. It's prismatic and something that I thought about, something that I don't know if it's fully correct. And I'm going to say this, even though this is a lot of extra bits, but I think the witness, not the witness, I think the... Uh, 
traveler and the veil were before the witness one entity which is why prismatic is a thing which is why it just is a thing and why just them coming together just basically clicking in place is a thing they were one entity but when the witness did its thing the traveler said oh fuck this and split itself in two but the witness had a way to like put them back together like it could sew the seams together again which is why it didn't that could be exactly what it did, which is why it made a gateway and was able to do it with the veil, because the veil was able to have extra dimensional uh, seams, basically, and all it did was sew it together. Somewhere on those lines, which is why prismatic's a thing and why the witness could be a thing, because the witness was. The witness was born, or the witness consciously was made in the dark, but the witness physically was made in the light. Which is what makes the witness so powerful overall. Why the witness can do so much crazy things. Why the witness is a god or was a god. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's still alive, to be completely honest. Because how do you truly kill something that has a monolith that is it? How do you kill a building? <laughs> I don't think it's truly dead. I think... The reason why I say I don't think it's truly dead is because there is a 12-man mission that released after the world's first team completed the world, uh, the race. That race, I didn't watch it. It just looks amazing. The little clips I've seen here and there of that uh, raid looks amazing. The reason why I haven't seen anything on that is because I want to experience it for myself overall. Like, when I first get to play it, I want to see it and just, holy shit, everything. Just, just absorb everything and just see it all for what it is. But, uh... What was I going to say? That mission, you're able to kill him, relatively speaking. And I say him because at the end, something kind of cool, when you hear the witness get angry, you hear one voice above all others. When he dies, when he's dying, he doesn't say we, and he starts sounding more and more like that loud, angry voice. It's not we, it's not we, it's I don't know what's going on, as he's just floating into oblivion. Which, the eye there means he kept losing more and more pieces, which could be the echoes. And that I have no clue about, that I'm just speculating, but that could be why when he died, he released echoes. But there could be a witness echo that is the head honcho, that one that was angry, the one that was there above all else, the true witness, basically. Which, if there is a true witness, that could do some crazy shit, because now, I'm guessing the power of echoes is prismatic in some way, shape, or form, so imagine true witness with true prismatic. It, it, shit could go fucking haywire, which is why I, hi I not highly suggest I was going to say that. I highly think that we are going to get a lot of crazy shit with, uh, for the different subclasses, even these subclasses. Like, for an example, St uh, Stasis is going to get a next another super for Titus specifically, because Zavala did not use Glacial Quake. When he did the big ass slam towards the uh, uh, the horde in the opening cutscene for the mission, he did not use glacial quake. He used the equivalent of this this bad boy. He used the equivalent of that, and like how glacial quake is the equivalent of that. That makes sense because state or not stasis, stasis and arc are two sides of the same coin, so it makes sense that they would have very similar properties and just things like that. This this game is fucking gorgeous. This game is an ecosystem, and the only problem with it, and they are solving this too, is that the story is hard to find in the game. Like, the actual nitty-gritty of the story. There's pretty colors, there's cutscenes, but there's so much extra lore. Piece of loot. Every piece of loot, I think even blues, have lore in them. And that is why my name is Bife is the Lore Daddy. I call no one else daddy in any way, shape, or form. I don't even mean it sexually. I mean that as a sign of respect. Because holy fuck, the amount of time and effort he has invested into this just num ones and zeros 
is fucking amazing because he gives everyone the ability to read this amazing lore overall. And I don't even know what this says. I don't even care about it. I do care about it. I'm going to read it later, possibly. But that is an amazing part uh, part about how this community could be amazing if people just work together and give ideas. Not just say, this is best. Because that is where you get horrible metas. Or not metas. COD syndrome. So I want to really refer to it when it comes to Destiny. How people want to play it as COD. How this is the best because this damage number is the best. When you're not really wanting to always go for damage numbers. Even in uh, day, uh, day one raise or anything. You don't want to go with highest damage equals best damage. Because there's other things you could be doing than just damage like you could have well tracked or you could have well and track you could have well and div you could have all sorts of extra things and there's other ways to apply a debuff to allow you to do more damage overall instead of having supers depending on damage phase like different things here and there like the game is not call of duty in so many different ways it's not damage value is all you really need to know and that's it it's not simple this game simple is not a descriptor for it and that is something that I really want. Bun like, this is like the last thing I'm going to say. I think this is going to be the last thing I'm going to say. And that's the only suggestion I have for Bungie overall. Like, true suggestion. Because, I, like I said, I highly think that Bungie is going to do this. But I don't know if Bungie is going to do this. I highly suggest that they remake the New Light campaign from the ground up. Make something new that isn't cosmodrome like it is cosmodrome related so this all makes sense but it is not shah han it is not that new light and then like make an entire campaign actually not just a mission not just a couple missions here and there but a full-on campaign and it could it could even be a revamped of shah han's campaign how you go to the cosmodrome you get your ship but when you go to the mission like uh, fight that boss it's you like, when you first load into that, instead of you are this grand uh, guardian, you are a guardian. Because when you go into that mission, it's not you anymore. When you first load into it, it should say, you got them, and it should be a completely different voice lines here and there. Which would be very weird, because the Zavala then is not the Zavala now when it comes to voice actor. But, uh, and that would actually be a good way to cover that. They could have a pop-up saying the voice actor nowadays is different, so when you hear old voice lines, that's, that's why you hear that, like, that. That would actually help overall. But um, having that uh, overall mission be different. And it could even be, instead of a strike, be a mission mission. Where it has different voice lines, different things, because you're doing it for the first time. Like how the Witch Queen strike is different and different things like that. Excuse me, even though you didn't hear me. Um... And I highly suggest going from going even more in depth from there. Like going, I don't even know how far you should really go. But instead of having the skip for the different builds, having the campaign explain it, like how they did prismatic, how they did each mission giving you more and more stuff overall. Where instead of it giving you, ooh, it could be you have the ability, okay. Trying to help out the best because I don't like just giving an idea bare minimum when I'm trying to give an in-depth idea like this. So, I highly suggest it only goes with these three because I don't think you should give these three abilities out at all for free because these are campaign missions or campaign things. People will feel bad if you give them out for free. I highly suggest people get Prismatic for free, but only that and the ability to equip utility abilities on every subclass. Like, the Prismatic Grenade and that general thing should stay on those, but having a utility ability slot up here would be amazing overall. Uh, but with the new light stuff, I highly suggest the ability to, like, like how you can skip. Instead of having that skip, that is your first build. Like, baby's first build, basically. And that doesn't have to be called baby's first build. It could be called something else, but this is the first build you get. Covering one of the three subclasses, and while you're doing the campaign, you're getting more and more stuff for that subclass. By the end of it, you have everything unlocked for free. You don't have to spend Glimmer on it at all, and then you get the other two subclasses, their exotics and all of that. And even while you're doing the campaign, you're also getting the exotics that you can get now for the Striker subclass or Arc subclass, whatever uh, class you're playing on. Like, 
that general thing to make it more streamlined and just smooth overall. And then, after a little bit later, because I don't know how it can really flow into a campaign, but I think it should flow into... I don't think it should flow into the final shape. I think it should flow into one of the earlier campaigns. Ooh, you could give them a reason to buy Forsaken even more, or you could have New Light Campaign tacked onto that, or the continuation of the New Light Campaign. And I say ooh because that is basically an expansion pass. That is, I'm wanting to spend more money on this. I'm actually wanting to get into this. This is like a appetizer basically is what that would be because that pass basically is like 15 bucks i want to say it's fucking cheap but that pass gives you exotics all sorts of things the ability to go to the dreaming city uh, i think you can go to the city, actually you can go to the uh, dungeon and raid on the dreaming city and different things like that but the thing that makes it the thing that'll make that so much more interesting is that they don't up the price but give that a continuation, where when you purchase that, for people that already have it, it gives them more of a reason to say, yeah, I have that, because it gives them an expansion as well, like a newfangled something or another for that expansion for people that already have it, but when you don't have it and you purchase it as a new light, it gives you more campaign. Like, you're supposed to buy Forsaken, then Shadow Keep. Like, Forsaken will then... Hell, it could actually be the Forsaken campaign, but from the perspective of a new light. And that could be how it's portrayed in the trailers and everything's like that where you are the new light going through the forsaken campaign you're not just the guardian you're called the guardian it's you're always the guardian but you are still the new light you're not you don't know everything you're still progressing through it overall and then you will become more powerful like that that could teach you more about exotic synergies because this game is complex the least and what i'm talking about is how i would basically do it overall like how i'm going to do it basically overall for rrp and other games here and there that are more complex that i make i'm going to have a more in-depth tutorial but it's not really a tutorial it's going to be a while you're doing it it gives pop-ups like destiny does but i want to make it a little bit more streamlined i don't like it being on the bottom i want it to be more in your face but relatively speaking like when you have a pop-up on the bottom of your screen there's like lines going down saying look at that but not like, like very thin lines like it could even be like streaks that's it showing you that there's something down at the bottom saying it's there but like transparent just say look down there if you really want it but like in pvp and higher like in oh shit environments it won't pop up unless you're supposed to die or when you do die something like that uh, and that could even be a check. If you do know it, they won't give the pop-up. If you just do it, that, that general thing. Um, but having a more in-depth campaign that isn't, specifically isn't hand-holdy, will allow the new lights and new gamers overall that want to experience any game you're making with this concept to have a better time about it. Because people typically will skip the tutorial, just get into the gameplay to play with their friends. If the campaign is fun, anyone will want to play it. Like, that's all you have to make it is fun, enjoyable overall, with a lot of cool experiences. And with the Shadow, not Shadow Keep, with the uh, Forsaken uh, revamp, basically, there could be some crazy things that they could do. Like, they could revamp the Dreaming City itself, they could revamp the Tangled Shore, they could bring it back, they could do so many extra things there. And it's just an amazing concept, which would be very fun overall for everyone involved. Bungie, I think, would actually have a blast doing that, and the player base itself would have a blast playing it. Uh, with all that said, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and I will catch y'all on the next one.